Before this video starts, I would like to emphasize that the forecast at the end of the video is not going to be 100% rate. Right. It's not. It's going to be less rate right than my I don't know than my uh, other forecast, and that is because this is more for the fun of it. It was more a friendly competition that I wanted to form between the states, kind of you know between Minnesota and Wisconsin. Which one will be colder? I think Minnesota will be, and you know that's. It could Wisconsin could easily be colder. This one is more uh, definitely could be more wrong than my other forecast. So I just wanted to emphasize this. This is more for the fun of it. So enjoy and consider subscribing. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video that may seem awfully similar to a video I made not that long ago. The video that I made that not that long ago was who will see the coldest you know, fall temperatures 2019. That's it. Th th today, though, uh, I'm making a video who will see the coldest fall temperatures by region 2019. So basically, you know, this is a video that I made for, again, a quite a while, I think three or four years. And basically what I do is out of each region, the Midwest, the Northeast, the Northwest, I pick one state that will be the coldest, in my opinion, and who will win the cold temperature lottery, or, you know, the cold temperature, the coldest temperature this win this fall, this is by this fall, I also do one for winter, but this year I decided to do the top three states in the region, so it's a little bit different, but uh, if you like these videos, if you like my channel, consider subscribing, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, guys, this is freaking amazing, thank you so much for letting me, having this opportunity, I mean, it's 100% your, uh, your basically accomplishment, I mean, yeah, I, you know, put some input into this, but without you, I would be useless. So thank you so much, and let's get on with the video. So uh, this video will have the same content again. Subscribe, like the video, but this video will have the same content as the uh, the video that I made a couple days ago, and it was just simply who will see the coldest fall temperatures 2019. So, you know, I will just quickly go through this and, you know, see why I do think this fall will be fairly chilly overall. For a good portion of the country and these are the the categories you could see ends of outlook noah seasonal outlook and analogs i mean i'm just gonna run through this because i already made a video on this you could see enzo neutral is favored to emerge in the next season and then continue through the northern hemisphere fall and winter uh neutral is basically neutral enzo is gonna happen and you could see marked by this August, September, October, September, August, October, November, uh, through the fall months, a neutral pattern. Now, what does that mean? Um, before we get into that, I just wanted to quickly show you that, again, the confidence is mostly showing a neutral pattern. And uh, what does that mean? So, a uh, the Enzo overall in the first place is a, a abnormal warming or cooling of the South American or the Peruvian coast off of South America. And you can see there's Peru, that's Ecuador. You can see that uh, it's basically we're looking at these temperatures. Right now you can see it's a more of an abnormal cooling, but it's pretty warm once you go out here, so it's more of a neutral pattern. We're still showing uh, it as a El Nino, but it's definitely going to transition into neutral. Uh, if it already hasn't, it's just they haven't updated it yet. But you could see um, these, uh, these ocean temperatures here. Um, they are... You know that they're not a, a they're not in any uh, strong phase. I mean, they're more in that neutral phase. So, what are the impacts of a neutral? And right, you can see that for winter, this is Enzo uh, impacts on winter. You can see polar jet stream, pretty chilly conditions across the north. Uh, it gets colder than during a La Nina, especially for the eastern U.S. However, for the northwest. <laughs> Um, it doesn't get as cold, and that's because the polar jet stream, there's a bigger ridge here, and it gets more amplified, it goes higher, and it doesn't really, it just basically becomes more, uh, it becomes into a more of a, a slope, uh, more slanted slopes. During a La Nina, it would be something more like this, uh, during a neutral, something more like that, and that's the, that's the main difference, and also wet and warm here, so big storms across the northeast possibly, but basically you could see that's the winter impacts, so November could count as that. Uh, that's why I'm showing you this. But if you want to, uh, you know, just see what the fall impacts are of a neutral, you could see fairly similar. Um, you could see not too terribly chilly across the west, actually above average. But then across the eastern U.S., you could see that uh, there are some uh, 
the temperature anomalies that are rather chilly. You could see some blues, dark purples. So, you know, we're getting towards, we're hinting towards a chilly fall. Uh, this is just month by month. This is August. This is September. Or you could see pretty chilly as well. This is October and November. So those are all the fall months of a neutral pattern, which again, like I showed at the beginning of the video, we're most likely forecasted to get into. Uh, this is what NOAA's seasonal outlook is for October, September, uh, sorry, August, September, October, you could see equal chances in that white, but again, obviously, it's biased. I mean, come on, you'd have to be silly in order not to think that or not a single portion of the U.S. would be uh, below average. I mean, they're showing as of now, not a single place would be below average, which is ridiculous, obviously, but they, like I already mentioned, this is not really a, a forecast to look at and, you know, take uh, into account because they basically just put this out and they only edit it once it's a month out. Once it's three months out still, September, October, November, they just leave it there and kind of, you know, they don't do anything to it, which is frustrating because it fools a lot of people thinking it'll be a record-breaking fall. Well, it won't. Um, you know, it, it definitely won't. Uh, I think it will actually be the opposite. And this is my final forecast outlook map. And what I, you know, want to, again, emphasize is that this forecast is not going to be 100% right. This forecast is probably going to be more incorrect than my other forecast just because it's, I mean, it's, a, it's literally a lottery. I mean, Minnesota, I think, will be cold along with Wisconsin. And that I have pretty high confidence in that backed by science. But... I think, you know, why I chose Minnesota as being number one versus um, Wisconsin being number one, there's really no, uh, you know, there's literally no reason for it. There's a couple of reasonings that I could, you know, include, but it definitely could be 100%, you know, wrong. So this is more for the fun of it. So, you know, please take this with, uh, you know, with ease. And let's start with the Northwest. So first, uh, we have states like Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. And I do think that uh, uh, Montana will be the coldest because it's furthest to the north, obviously. And this year, the the cold will be centered across the north. And uh, you may be wondering, isn't it always centered across the north? Well, it's not. Um, usually, we, um, you know, it's not always. Sometimes last year, it was more centered across the south and the central U.S. rather than the cold, uh, rather than the north. And I want to emphasize that this is based off average. This is not based on Oh, you're seeing 30s here, you're seeing 40s, it's colder here, it's based on average. So, uh, you can see that in Montana, it will be the coldest, I think, uh, and Idaho will be number 3, and Wyoming will be number 2, and I, I think that it will be, you know, more centered the cold towards the east. When you talk about the west, is because it will be more of a neutral pattern, so the jet stream will be going something like that, and more of the cold will be able to fall into Wyoming and Montana. Now, if we were to look at uh, the southwest, uh, like states like... California, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico. I do think that Colorado will be the coldest out of these. Again, the jet stream will be going more from uh, this, uh, you know, will be more basically able to bring the cold into the furthest east states of the western region, if that makes sense. So Colorado, I think, will be the coldest. Utah, number two. New Mexico, number three. Reason why uh, Utah is number two instead of number three since it's further to the west i do think that some warm air will be mixing in here so uh i think new mexico may not be as chilly as uh you know previously thought i think that there could be some warming conditions going on across the southwest moving on moving on to the different region let's go on to let's go on to the midwest All right, and you can see that we have north dakota south dakota nebraska minnesota iowa wisconsin illinois uh, indiana michigan and the and Ohio, there's two states in this uh, in this region that are in this light blue. That is basically an honorable mention. Uh, I couldn't decide whether it was between uh, North Dakota and and Minnesota being the coldest, but I decided it was Minnesota. And then I decided Wisconsin would be the second coldest and Michigan the third coldest. So this would be like the fourth. But I do think that uh, that I you know. It's, it was a little bit complicated. Again, uh, this forecast isn't too sound, but uh, I do think this one was uh, honorable to mention. It'll be pretty cold. Ohio is just because I think there'll be lots of lake effect due to this cold. This is not a snow forecast. However, I still included it in here. 
So I do think Minnesota coldest, Wisconsin number two, Michigan number three. The reason uh, uh, Michigan will be uh, number three is because of Lake Michigan will be protecting some of it <clears throat> from the coldest temperatures, and Minnesota will literally have no protection. Um, so that's the reason for for it. Uh, let's move on to Northeast, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, New York, Pennsylvania, uh, 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 Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts. And the reason I have uh, New York as being the coldest is because it's... Uh, it's it's not protected by a lake and in, and you can see it's the furthest to the east or furthest to the west because again I do think it will be centered something like this the cold so you know that's a rough drawing but you know these states it's hard to pick which one will be colder but these is more easier I think that further to the west it will be colder and you may be like well Pennsylvania is not the coldest one here well because it's protected by giant lake right here lake erie and that'll protect some of it the cold air from reaching into this part of the country and then new york is protected by lake right here but a lot of it's still open in these locations so that's the reason it's colder and then vermont is uh, the second coldest because uh it has no lake protecting it and then maine is honorable mention as being chilly as well and then if we were to look at the southeast we could uh, see uh, that Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi are all the states that are uh, in this region. And I think that uh, Tennessee will be the coldest because it will be not protected by anything. North Carolina, South Carolina, a little bit warmer because of the mountains could protect it from, protect it from some of the cold. However, it could also be a backstabber and uh, bring it some pretty chilly temperatures later on during the winter. So North Carolina, number two, South Carolina, number three. And then the final region, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, kind of like the south southern plains. And you can see that uh, I, I have Kansas as being the coldest, uh, Missouri being the second coldest, and Oklahoma being the third coldest. Uh, so that's basically it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.